Welcome to Insight. I'm Wendy Brokaw. We are excited today to bring you along on a guided tour of a major exhibit, Claudia Cave, Interiors and Interiority at Halle Ford Museum of Art right here in Salem. My guest is Roger Hull, Professor of Art History Emeritus at Willamette University, to talk about the exhibit and the artist who you know so well. I understand her interest was sparked at a very early age. Tell us a little about her. Well, uh, Claudia Cave uh, was born in Salem and grew up in Salem. And her father was a foreman over at the Del Monte uh, Cannery at 12th and Mill in central Salem. Her mother worked for an architectural firm. She was the office manager uh, here in Salem. <clears throat> uh, and uh, she, uh, uh, Claudia's mother, uh, subscribed to Architectural Digest, which uh, Claudia, as a young child, poured over loved this magazine, glossy, high-end architectural magazine that came in every, every month. Uh, and uh, later on, she, has, she credits her interest in architectural interiors, which is the subject of much of her work, in part to, um, to having uh, been introduced to Architectural Digest. At the same time, however, she was introduced to architecture through her grandmother's somewhat uh, old-fashioned and uh, picturesque house on Bellevue Street in Central Salem. Uh, Claudia described it as a kind of wacky house, old, <laughs> you know, in good enough shape, but worn, <laughs> patinaed, uh, with lots of odd oddments in it. Uh, <laughs> a, a very different reality architecturally than what she was seeing in uh, Architectural Digest. And uh, so these two uh, architectural sources, glossy, high-end, and local down home, uh, kind of combined themselves to uh, provide Claudia with a real interest in, in architectural spaces. Roger, we have some wonderful images that we've been allowed to use. First one we see here is Claudia Cave, The Down Under from 1988. Tell us about this. Uh, well, The Down Under is uh, one of my favorite works uh, of Claudia's. It is laid out kind of like a comic strip, and that is an element in uh, Claudia's work. And uh, what it shows is uh, uh, we start out by looking at an arm with a charm brace bracelet upon it. Then we move in a little closer to look at one of the charms, which happens to be a house. Then we look closer at that charm and um, come even closer in to the house. And then uh, the curtains on the house get parted in scene four. I see that. In scene five, we are uh, looking down into the living room, let's say, of the house, where one of these spiky ladies is sitting in a red chair with her long legs and her spiky heels and her cigarette. <laughs> uh, and then we see an open door uh, that uh, is leading down some stairs with red carpeting on the stairs. We go down those stairs, and we are down deep in the house, uh, drinking some coffee. Uh, one of these slightly ladies uh, drinking, drinking some coffee. Uh, so we have made our way into the depths of the charm bracelet, uh, <laughs> one step at a time. Down, 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 down. Uh, <clears throat> so she says, you know, in my childhood, charm bracelets were really popular. My sister had a lot of them and I had a few, one from the Seattle World's Fair. I always loved the little objects on charm bracelets. In each charm, a whole world exists. So that's kind of what's going on in that one. <laughs> oh, it's, it's such an unusual thing with a comic book and it does invite you in to look deeper and deeper into that charm. What's that all about? And all about? What, what an imaginative <laughs> presentation. Yeah. Let's let's go on to the next one here, uh, a rather famous one. This was Lighthouse. She uh, tends to link uh, houses with human beings and says that uh, for her, up in the attic areas, you have uh, the parallel, the equivalent of the mind, a person's imaginative interior mind, interiority coming up again, I guess. Uh, and uh, so we noticed in this one that the woman uh, looking out 
uh, out the window with the candelabra beside her and the light bulb necklace. Her head, her cranium is really sort of up in the attic zones of this house. Uh, and uh, we're sort of literally identifying the cranium and the mind and the imagination with the upper reaches of a, of a house. Down in the lower left corner, we have, seem to have a couple of little uh, openings that show a woman swimming underwater. Uh, and she, she believes that down in the subterranean zones of houses is the more concealed, secret uh, parts of the psyche where you have to burrow down to really, or in this case, swim down, I guess, to really uh, access what's going on down there. I also pick up something else from this is that there's a willingness to explore all of that in this image. Yeah. Explore what's there. She doesn't have set interpretations although she does think of houses in that general way. She wants the viewer to indeed explore, to um, take the image, use their own experiences as they come upon it, uh, work with it, see what comes up for them. Uh, she, wants it, she wants the viewer to be active and independent. Moving to the next one, Epitaph. So, uh, <clears throat> In general, she uh, like she suggests that her work reflects her personal experience, uh, experiences through life, growing up and thinking back and remembering. And uh, sometimes the the reference is quite broad in general, but other times quite specific. And in this case, she says this painting is about my great aunt. So very concrete. Uh, this painting is about my great aunt who dabbed in sculpture. She lived in Seattle and we visited her during the Seattle World's Fair in 1962. Her yard and home were filled with sculptures of animals. She also painted a mural on a dining room wall depicting African animals. Her couch was covered with a leopard print. She had fake floor to ceiling palm trees with monkeys uh, hanging um, from the trees. Um, her house and grounds were a one for wonderland for a child. It's a bit like her grandmother's house in Salem in a sense, but more exotic, I guess. And yes, she smoked using a cigarette holder. So we look at that work and there's, a, there's her aunt, one of these spiky females with her cigarette in a holder. Uh, and then here are all of these um, uh, sort of exotic uh, African animals, uh, wild life animals that uh, she remembers from her aunt's house up in Seattle. Her aunt was quite a character and talented artistically. Yes. And you notice that she has charm bracelets. Not, not that we're <laughs> now going that to I, them. Now that I look, take a closer look, there they are. <laughs> <laughs> the next one seems to be more serious, devastatingly serious. It's called War Toys. Yes. Well, Claudia, like many artists, like many of us uh, have our views about war. Uh, this is dated 1983. She wanted to comment on war and the sort of gamesmanship that it may involve. Uh, so she is uh, using a variety of devices for that. Uh, there's a photograph. She didn't doesn't think it's particularly important to know who is in that photograph of the soldier at the head at the top, but it happens to be her father, who's served in the Korean War. Uh, <clears throat> there are. Uh, um, toy soldiers uh, falling and cascading off the table. She likes to uh, take design principles and kind of um, kind of uh, jar them a bit or disrupt them a bit, uh, in introducing awkwardness for its own sake. For instance, bringing that candle so close to the edge of the table or uh, having the dog's nose off on the left there to actually touch the frame, you know, and more conventionally designed work, you wouldn't have that sort of kissing edges as she calls them. Uh, so she's, she's underlying the sort of problematic nature of wartime with a, a composition that's a little bit jittery, a little bit off, a little bit out of kilter. For all of its awkwardness, it's incredibly precise, all of it. It's all structured, you know what it is. And in that, she's remarkably gifted. And she says, uh, again, uh, my work is about structure. Structure that may be a bit manipulated or contorted or 
warped but structured. Uh, and uh, she, she traces that back in part to her grandmother's house, which she had sort of awkward, um, <laughs> slightly disjointed uh, elements to it, as she remembers it anyway. Thank you. In our next picture, An American Tradition, we see more of that animal presence of like, I see animals of some sort uh, with teacups on their heads. Yeah. <laughs> that can happen. No. Uh, yes, an American tradition, getting together to have coffee and tea is a kind of um, metaphor for her, for congeniality. Uh, she loves to uh, treat human beings as animals, animals as human beings, have them behave in the opposite way uh, from their natural state. So uh, here, I guess we have um, wolf gals with their dresses and uh, so forth, uh, sitting in a booth uh, uh, for whatever reason, uh, choosing to present their cups on top of their heads. Uh, <clears throat> and another work with an arm reaching in just as in the uh, war uh, toys composition. Although here the uh, mood is considerably more uh, raucous and uh, humorous. <laughs> and who knows where the tea will go from the yeah. inside of the cup inside them? Who knows? Yes. Who knows? <laughs> it, it's a sort of like all bets are off. Anything could happen in that picture. <laughs> I yes. like that. Well, and is happening. <laughs> Excavation. Um, a very much yeah, so here, combination of all of those elements that you've been talking about. That I don't, I almost think that you'll have to explain that to me because I could re start reading all kinds of things into that that maybe aren't there or are there. I mean, I'm, she, that, she would like that. Uh, uh, she, she likes to leave things open ended. Uh, she likes the viewer to bring what she has in her own mind to the work. Um, uh, interpret in, in personal terms. Uh, I think we see a number of things that we've seen before. We hear the roof is off and we're not looking at the house straight on, we're above, but there is that um, uh, little inner room with the red chair. The person sitting in it seems to have left and gone down the steps that we see within the uh, framework of the house. Uh, <clears throat> but this goes back to her idea that houses uh, reflect something out of the human mind and that when we excavate down under, when we leave the house and go down underneath it, we are um, entering the world of um, uh, hidden meanings, uh, suppressed thoughts. She says, our minds are active, yet most of what we think is never spoken or expressed. Thought is in the upper portions of a house. When you go down under, it is usually in search of hidden things excavating to discover something that has been hidden. So uh, I think something of that is going on in this, uh, in, in this particular piece. Sounds like she's uh, suggesting that this is kind of what it is to be human, to kind of have the upper story of thoughts expressed and um, a lot of musing going on beneath the surface. Yes, I think ongoing kind of interior dialogue of thoughts mm -hmm. and things, sorting themselves out. Yes, I think that's very much what she uh, is thinking about in, in general. This next one is called Refuge Mask. So this is one of two uh, masked face paintings that are in the exhibition, uh, at the beginning of the exhibition. Uh, and uh, they're the ones that are most expressly dealing with this notion of interiority. Uh, I, and I particularly wanted to have them in the show because we are in this masked and masking world at this point, although she did these in 2002. The, the title I think is helpful. It's, it, the mask is kind of a refuge, you, you know, a pulling in, a masking of self. She, she sees masking in a positive sense, and that's, uh, even though it's a sort of re refuge situation, but within a mask, within the masking, uh, one uh, is able to uh, assess oneself, come to terms with oneself, be with oneself, and not worry about what others may think. You know, it's a private, it's private, privacy, seclusion, contemplation, self analysis. And we have untitled 
that one doesn't have color. This, this is a, a drawing, graphite on paper. But again, this tremendous uh, sense of uh, drawing skill, uh, ability to render texture and detail. I also noticed something else about it. It's rather human. I see almost people reaching out, suppressing others, uh, getting in each other's way. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is supposed to be a tree of some sort. Yeah, but I think And yet it, it has a very human feel to it. Yeah, as I sit here looking at it, uh, I, uh, I agree with you entirely. <laughs> Uh, organic. <laughs> it really is. I mean, I, it's hard not to think of it as people uh, interacting with each other in ways large and small. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, there is a strong uh, element of surrealism in Claudia Cave's work. Uh, and I think this work suggests that, this, this sort of nature turning into humanoid forms and stuff. Uh, she's very interested in uh, German Expressionism of the World War I era, Otto Dix and, uh, and George Groves and some of those German Expressionist painters of the World War I era. Yeah. The last of the images that I see is Claudia Cave, the actual Claudia Cave and her drawing Sharing the Wealth. And what makes that so interesting to me is that it almost seems like there's a shyness to Claudia Cave, I think. Mean, well, she's... Claudia Cave, you know, we've, Bonnie and I, my wife Bonnie and I have known Claudia since the 70s when we came to Oregon. Uh, and uh, her husband, Kent Sum Sumner. Uh, she's a very um, uh, quiet um, woman, very witty and humorous, but soft-spoken, a quiet, unassuming person. Uh, somewhat at odds to what we might think of her through the art, which is uh, kind of uh, out there. Uh, and I think the art was a way for her, is a way for her to uh, to sort of project an inner imaginative self that uh, she doesn't necessarily um, uh, act out. But she's a student. This is just when she, she and her husband Kent went on from Western Oregon. Uh, to uh, the University of Idaho, where they earned their Master of Fine Arts degrees. They both did and got those in 1980. Uh, and uh, this was taken just after they completed their degrees. So that's an early work, um, uh, Sharing the Wealth. Another one with the arm reaching in, you can see, sharing the wealth with some sort of dog creature. <laughs> Who's getting, getting a plate of cake, I guess. Everything about sharing the wealth brings me to the conclusion of our program, which is you are in this exhibit sharing the wealth with her beautiful images, drawings, uh, with the larger community. In a, this, this is just an exciting thing to be able to present to people. And I encourage them to go to the Halley Ford Museum of Art website and get your time-stamped ticket ahead of time so that because it's so popular these days going to Halley Ford Museum of Art you don't want to miss it and you want to make sure that you have yours in place and it's going to be until December 4th December 4th well so it has a nice long run but you must not let that lull you into not getting organized and it's such fun getting a, a feeling for the artist and their work this way and I thank you for just taking each and every one of these images we've seen and giving us the backstory on them and introducing them in a way that we can really relate to them and the whole idea of interiority and uh, thank, well, thank you, you Roger. For, thank you for uh, inviting me to do this. <laughs> this is wonderful. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today on Insight. My guest was Roger Hall. He is Professor of Art History Emeritus at Willamette University, taking us on a virtual guided tour of the Claudia Cave exhibit. Go see it yourself.